Привет, как дела? Здравствуйте, алло, welcome to As the Blade Turns. It is Yad David Spletnikov, and this is our holiday edition, A Word with a Terry Tuberidze. As the famous Christmas song goes, I don't want a lot for Christmas. There is only one thing I need. I don't care about the presents. You know, what is this bullshit? First thing, Mariah Carey is way too fat for figure skating. And second, I have never met a skating coach who lacked appreciation for presents or designer bags. Needless to say, our beautiful queen, Krasiva Koroleva, Eteri Georgievna Tudbaridza, my idol, my saint, our mother, gave an interview to First Channel. And unlike this reboot series of Sex in the City that every white girl and homosexual is pretending is good, this interview was actually even more interesting than I, David Spletnikov, expected. And I would have given you this video a day earlier, but I was performing. And my own Russian coach was beating the soul out of my body. And then she did the same thing again. After reviewing anything and everything in the performance, she did not like. But remember, don't be afraid to make a mistake. But if you do make a mistake, the yelling will continue until you realize what the fuck it is that I want you to do on the ice. You know, unlike the coaches in the United States who post so much on Instagram that they might pay to be interviewed, Itiri Kyrkievna has known how to make herself scarce, so has to develop an air of mystery about herself. And frankly, if you have studied any of her statements and her contradictory stories, you know that there is much to wonder about. This interview though it may not be entirely factual, may have been her best performance of the season. Because let's be honest, Valieva's programs, not so interesting. Sherbakova's squads, they were so cheated last week that the Federation was upset at a recent simulation. And Trusova could only jump it like that one time before she was broken like all the others. But unlike these rude people in St. Petersburg, I would never boo our true Koroleva, a woman who is both popularizing the sport in Russia and killing it around the world. And boy, she is doing it with such style and flair. Channel 1 announced an interview with Eteri Tudbaridze a month ago. It was supposed to be shown during the Grand Prix Finals. But as you know, the competitions were cancelled. As a result, the interview appeared yesterday. And it began of the introduction of the legendary coach's new pet. Now just a note, this is only the first of two parts with Tudbaridza. We are also been giving a documentary of such a fascinating personality. A true angel of Russia and the Fogoria Catania. And so it is Yadavid Spletnikov who will read and interpret the first part of this interview, as I don't want to give you just one gift for Christmas, but so many with all my love and devotion. But we start with showing a softer side of Tudbaridza, and I'm reminded of when I met Tudbaridza in Las Vegas, and she was wearing a giant cross and was sure to show that she loved Dog. Dog loved her. This is a soft woman. A sweet woman. She is a mother. She is a mother who is getting her daughter Diana to the Olympics. And when I told all of you late this summer that Diana would go to the Olympics, I read so many comments. You are bullshit. You are stirring drama. Annabelle has much better score. Well, I just want to say, who is stirring the bullshit now? And we start with the interview. What a cutie. What's the name? Itiri. Michelle. So little. 
I don't know how big she will grow. Well, she's small. Where did you get it? Sasha Trusova gave it to me. She got such a dog. I joked with her. Give me this dog. Why do you need it? You already have five or six. One day she came with a carrier, put it on the ice and said, Here is a dog for you. At first I thought she gave me hers to play. And then it turned out that this is for me. And I realized, you cannot joke with Sasha. And how does it feel? I adore her. Is it easier with dogs than with people? Vite, you can't harm a dog with your love. You can love, and this will not harm it. And with an athlete, you need to be more careful. Uh, yes, when I think of Eteri, or I think of a great coach like Tarasova, I think, yes, this is a person who loves too much. Because when they're pushing you, they're loving you. And you know, it is not about them. It is about the athlete. They love with all their being. Well, the interviewer continues. Therefore, there are legends about you that you are... Что? Harsh. I am harsh. Straight shooter. Strict. I prefer to tell my athletes the truth. Because they will hear flattery from others. The truth they will hear only from me. You know, I hear this every day. Dev, I am not American coach. I am not coach who says, wow, I tell it you the truth. You know, Lukan, and he always saying, wow, oh, this is good. Oh, your shit is wonderful. Oh, this is the best shit I ever see in my life. Not. I, Galina, she tell it you the truth. The interviewer continues. They can say that the difficult path that you have gone. Terry, I don't think that someone has an easier path. Success came because your parents believed in you? Oh, the first thing that angered me, why I wanted to realize myself, was probably laid when I was four years old. Our relatives from Georgia came. They were sitting at the table in the kitchen, and someone asked my dad, so how many children do you have? He sits and says, one son. And I hit him on the shoulder from behind. Dad, there are five of us. He was like, move away, one son. Then I asked Dad, why? He says, the son will carry on the family name and you are girls. It doesn't count. I always wanted to prove that it counts. You know, this is a very interesting story because you have to wonder, why is Eteri the way she is? They always say, Mama's so wonderful. Her mother, Eteri. But now you have to wonder, where did the injury come from? Where was the initial wound? So interesting. And you know that son wound up in jail. I digress. In one of your interviews, you said, it's a pity that dad didn't see this Sochi triumph. Da. Da. He came with me to the skating rink and gave each of them valuable instructions in Georgian. He believed in me. Mom saw Sochi. She had the opportunity to enjoy. You can see that, how she's shown in an interview that they made about her daughter's successes. Terry, I think she always shown. It's true. When she was talking about you, incredible love was always felt. Yes, she even kept a diary where she counted the number of medals and she gave it to me at the end of the year. How many that year? How many this year? What level? Mom was very inspired with figure skating. Mom was very strict with you at the age of five when she brought you... Yes, she knew that I should not stand for a second. I was afraid to stop. I couldn't stop. I was doing some exercise or movement, and she thought what to do next so as not to stop. So that mom does not scold? Yes. And at the same time, you love her medley? Certainly. Ganeshna. She did it for me, not for herself. 
do you now understand what you did wrong when you skated yourself? Certainly. Somewhere warm up or exercise. But instead of running where we were told, we used to hide in the bushes. We used to wait for those required 15 minutes and returned. If my mother knew this, she would scold. Interviewer. You shine. You are a kind person. When I read about some kind of harshness, cruelty, I have a feeling that you have specially created such an image. Itiri. First, it's easier that way. As for strictness and rigidity, it is present in training. Sometimes it makes me extremely sad when I understand that an athlete could have done a given workout much better. Or he cannot pull himself together. You have to anger somewhere, force to turn on. If I do not force, this athlete will not have a medal. The joy that she stood on the pedestal and God blesses the anthem in her honor. It won't be. This means that I will have to invest my strength and energy. Okay, well, another athlete won't love me. Has it ever happened with you that you are telling the truth, but the person is offended? <laughs> de veras, de veras. <laughs> Get offended and leave. There are a lot of such examples. I myself remember very well that the coach didn't tell me anything bad in adolescence. But everything caused a lump in my throat. It seemed to me that I was not understood, underestimated. This is fine. These are hormones. There should be complete trust, which will lead to the goal. Sasha Trusova's transfer. She said quite sincerely, I need to change the picture right or not, but I felt that we were decoration. It seems to them that somewhere it could be better. Etere, firstly, it always seems to us that the grass is greener, the sky is bluer. Everything is better somewhere else. Do you deny anyone the right to return? Listen, no. Once, Paulina Shelepin ran away from the training camp because I took the cutlets from her lunch. If she had come back, she would have been the world champion. Not in 2014, but in 2015. She would have. How else? David Spletnikov would like to intervene, because at the very beginning of Hans Joyce's ice cream stand, he once said Polina Shilipin was the ugliest skater he ever remembered when she was against Kanako Murakami. That is complete bullshit, dude. <laughs> Polina Shilipin was not world champion material. But I am very glad that Eteri has confirmed that Paulina Shelepin ran away from the training camp and into the forest because we have heard the situation for years. And Eteri has asked Paulina many times to coach at Rustalni and Paulina says not. Very interesting. Spasiba Eteri. She continue. If the athlete comes back, it means that he has realized something. I don't force because I like it. Athletes are different. But unfortunately, someone needs to be forced. It is energy consuming. I also want to enjoy the process, not force. Girls who come back to you from other places, where do they start? Are they asking for forgiveness? No, I don't like it. Why are these forgiveness needed? This is humiliating. We all want to maintain a sense of self-sufficiency. Sometimes we didn't even ask forgiveness to our parents. Yes, I will say when Kasternaya had to dance and skate with the young children, she wasn't asking for forgiveness. Tudbriza didn't want to humiliate her when she asking her to skate the program that apparently she left Rustal knee for Plushenka over. No, Atere, she does not want forgiveness or humiliation. This is not true. Interviewer, are you encouraged by the existence of competitors who lure your athletes? Eteri, listen. Yes, there are such things. Interviewer, for example, 
There is Plushenka. Itteri. Is he? Interviewer. Yanis Nile. Itteri. Yatorje. This is the Russian equivalent of the Mariah Carey. I don't know her. Interviewer. I'm theoretically. I'm talking about the conditional Plushenka who conditionally invites the conditional athletes to him and they conditionally agree to join his group. Does this fact itself help it to be at the forefront of the fight and find internal reserves to progress? Niet. I have no conditional Blushenka. I understand what this coach has to do with it. Look, if our athletes are good, they will be welcome everywhere. They are bad, nobody needs them. We strive to make them strong and desirable. Interviewer. That is, if they are desirable, then they are needed. It did. Certainly. It depends on the athlete. It depends on trust and understanding. If it's not there, and the athlete received the call or message, I don't know how it works there. Honestly, I never, although I wanted to, I haven't invited anyone. Although sometimes you look at some athlete and realize that you would give him more. But I don't cross this line. If you have called, you are already obliged. You destroyed there. So you have to show better results with this athlete. You know, this is very interesting. That Teresa says that she has never stolen an athlete. This is interesting. Maybe she has coaches do it for her, but... She sends signals, as I already heard, she wants more of Yova. But this is a great situation, because, you know, all of the Ganesheva with Panova, all of these athletes with other coaches, you think Ateri didn't want them. How she take it? So athletes, who she want? They just come into her? You know, when Bela Karoli was coach, he used to stand next to the floor exercise when a gymnast from another coach was competing. So as the signal that he wanted to coach them. If you watch old videos, you can see him looking at different athletes when they are competing. It would be a signal for the athlete that Bella wanted them. Then they would come to his gym. But he did not recruit. He just showed interest. He appreciated their talent. While the interviewer continues. But it's so convenient to take prepared skaters. This is true, as we hear that all of the skaters from Tudoridza can all jump cascades with triple-triple. He says, would you invite Lisa Tuktamisheva? Ettiri, at one point, I wondered why she didn't jump quadruple jumps. I saw that they are there. I would not invite her to my group. Not because she isn't interesting to me, but because there is ethics. Coaching ethics. I know some athletes who would like you to call and who are wondering why this is not happening. Now we have found out why. Teddy, even before the appearance of Maxim Kovtun, when he was skating in Yekaterinburg, I came to the competitions and saw this guy training alone. I thought, if only he came to us. But we don't have such a thing. You see, this is Yekaterinburg. So it was necessary to provide an apartment and things like that. You know, this is very interesting uh, that it did love it, Kovtun, because I remember Federation had to screw Kovtun to get Plushenka to the Olympics in Sochi. And this was complete bullshit. <laughs> this is an amazing, amazing woman. She remembered everything. Very strategic. Point, it Brilliant. Well, now they ask about Sochi Olympics. I look at you and understand that my happiest memories associate with you, actually. <laughs> this is an interesting person. Because February 2014 in Sochi is, without exaggeration, the happiest month in my life. Every time I return there and think that it was some kind of concentration of emotions. Eteri, the concentration of emotions. Exactly. Interviewer, everyone was running after you, as well as after Yulia Lipnitskaya. They try to find out where she trains. Da, da. They even installed a camera in the locker room. Here, somewhere on the ice. Well, on one hand, it was incredible. Did it annoy you then? It didn't know. At the time, I was very worried that this would completely destroy Yulia's concentration. 
which unfortunately happened. From a team event to an individual competitions, this was a different athlete. She was unfocused. If we returned to the six-minute warm-up before short program, already on the ice, I knew that she would not skate. She did not warm up. She skated along the boards, ran her finger along the boards, and looked into the judge's eyes. This, of course, was surprising. After all, a little girl, 15 years old, paid tribute, a bow to her mom. Mom led her to this medal. I really hope that when Yulia is older, she realizes this and will thank her mother. Do you think this has not happened yet? I don't know. I just want awareness. Like with Zhenya, the realization should come that it is still an Olympic medal, albeit a silver one for Zhenya. So with Yulia, I would like her to realize that they had a difficult relationship, but her mother gave her her whole life and brought Yulia, her daughter, to this medal. She did not take care of herself. She took care of her daughter. You practically give up your own life. How did your relationship during the Sochi Olympics with other colleagues and coaches? How did they perceive you? And what is there to perceive? Look, this is where the effect works really well. Everyone thinks that I am evil and no one communicates with me. Therefore, I do not need to communicate with anyone. Convenient. Very. You have already had two Olympics. It is not only joy that comes to mind, but there is also a drama. If we take Sochi, then especially individual competition darkened my state. If we take the 2018 Olympics, then of course, firstly, the state of my mother at that time. I didn't understand at all whether she would wait for me. And Genia's reaction to the medal, all this also darkened. Place and time, where would you like to be now? Of course, each of us would like to return to the moment when your parents are alive. Say thank you to them. We do not know how to appreciate what we have. We take everything for granted. You have already come to the state when the pedestal is already yours. First, second, and third place. You saw these pedestals and then the question arises for me as a layman. An absolutely banal life question. It is clear that a lot depends on the coach. Weren't there such moments before the competition when you thought, whom to place higher? No. I was even once interviewed before the Olympics and asked how I think they should place. I said that it is very important to me that each of these athletes showed her maximum in order not to regret that I could have jumped better or I lost my concentration a bit. I didn't have enough strength. I didn't train well enough. And then when this maximum is worth. There was the 2018 Olympics where there were two medals, first and second places. And I told Sergei Viktorovich and Daniel Markovich, guys, we need to understand that we have two athletes, first and second place. These seconds, minutes, we have to be grateful to them that it happened. And we came to this. We got the maximum out of what we were going to. Who is your main competitor now? Are you looking at someone? In general, I do not like to look at anyone because when I look at someone, I like everyone. Everyone seems to me stronger than us. It upsets me. Seriously? That's why I don't look. No. Because everyone in the world is looking at you. I don't look because everything upsets me at once. Everything seems to me strong. This one is gliding well. This one is something else. This one has made just a spiral. Do you feel like the most demanded coach? No, no. I perfectly understand that the higher we climb, the more demand from us. Because people believe and expect. But I understand how delicate and fragile it all is. Do you feel people's envy? It's okay to envy. I also sometimes looked at some coaches and at the Olympics, medals, medals, and I thought, I wish I could do that too. I think it's okay to envy. Is it important for you to be recognized, master of your job? Well, I do not immediately become recognized. I was unrecognized for some time. I just looked at those who won and thought, I wish I could do that too. I was jealous. 
I wish my skaters could skate like that too. This is not envy. This is the pursuit of a goal. I wish I would bring several athletes to the competition at once. I wish my athletes took the whole pedestal. I wish they would not come just as participants, but come to fight for the medals. That would be great. Is envy the engine of success? Probably. I think it was envy. I was jealous. About Evgenia Medvedeva. Didn't you feel that sometimes you become closer for your girls than their mothers? Ediri, I had this. Probably, no offense for other athletes, Virginia. She needed me so much in such moment. I raised her, taught her how to do makeup, dress, behave, how to react to some jokes. And at some point, this conflict between fathers and children happened, mothers and children. Therefore, to be honest, I tried to bring it closer. How did you come to terms with her departure then? Well, not that I had a choice. You behaved as diplomatically as possible, but you could not have said something like a territory breeds about Zhenya Medvedeva. Why? And frankly, it didn't hurt me. She had an interview where she said that she begged us to keep the original program which was choreographed. But you changed. It is not true. She got off the ice in Bratislava, putting on skate guards. She told me, I will not skate this program again. Already from the plane, I phoned Daniel Gleikenhaus and said that he should do whatever he want, but make the new program. He said, are you out of your mind? But we did not have enough time to train it. Because instead of preparing for the season, Genia toured all Japanese shows in the summer. Pause. Didn't the Terry get 40%? Didn't she approve of this? Uh, 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 did the Terry go to Japan without the Terry's approval? Really, no. De veras. <laughs> We went to the test skates in a very weak shape. Then a game with weight started. Because someone told Genia, I even know who, that she looks anorexic and she will have low PCS. Despite the fact that Genia already had dents. She deliberately stopped controlling weight. Then under rotation started and stress fracture happened. We did our best in these circumstances. Yes, yes, I would just like to say that when I think about Zhenya in Japan or NHK in 2017, I think, how fat. Zhenya, you are fat. This is why you are injured. Because you know every Russian injury starts with weight gain. It is all the fat that causes a fracture. Da. Well, the interview continues about Alina Zagitova. How do you teach girls to jump? How do you do it? You didn't jump yourself but you know exactly what you need to do to jump now. Which is not true, obviously. Uh, Terry took from Edouard Pline. She was not great ice dancer. Let's, she is no Papa Dacus in Cicerone, okay? But Terry, she playing along. She says, here it seems to me the laws of biomechanics work. You see it? And it depends on how the athletes is able to do it. Because it's a split second. Also, what about Sergei Dudikov? Uh, anyway, do you take someone from the first glance? Probably Alina Zagitova. A weak girl came, but very flexible, so beautiful. I took her. Then I kicked her out. For what? Because she began to be lazy. And at that time, she lived in Moscow with her mother. And I tried to convey to her mother what I told her. Teach the process. Alina does not work. You have to force her. And her mother did not involve. And I was worried because they had moved from Izhevesk, rented an apartment here, and spent money to live in Moscow. And I decided to kick her out. Then her grandmother came and promised that she would take care of Alina. We had a condition that the mother would not live in Moscow. Almost would not visit her until the Olympic medal. And mother withstood. And then mother arrived. And Alina immediately became a girl, a mother's daughter who no longer want to spend 12 hours at the rink because there is a mother nearby and the medal is already there so the agreement was respected there was an olympic one but no medal from the world championships i promised alina till the olympics no offense grandmother brought her because she was with her 12 hours a day spent at the rink and grandmother set all of them is it expensive to train with a terry tutberidze on the contrary, it seems to me that we are trying to support all of them financially. We pay for apartments. We try. 
And when some results appear, to give some salaries, you know, we, we take percent, but we saw costumes, help with skates, equipment. Polina Surskaya, who came from Omsk, we solved her question. The same with Yulia Litnitskaya. When at least some results appeared, we began to address her issues as well. This is changing my attitude completely right now, because ordinary people usually think that millions are needed if you want to bring your child to such a stellar coach. Well, of course, I buy all my coats on the money that poor Alyonchka earns in shows and brings to me. I run and buy a new coat. But I wore these coats even before their results. <laughs> Again, not true. We also that ugly, 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 terrible coat at Terry Ward with Yulia Dmitskaya. This is not true. Well, now what Terry tells us about her daughter, Diana. How do you overcome the desire to favor someone more? All the same, there should be favorites. Nevertheless, even the Iron Lady, Eteri Tubaridza, is a human. Eteri, and I'll be honest, I have only one favorite, and this is my daughter. The rest, I give the maximum that I can give of myself, how much they will take it, and what they will do with it. Are there times when you close your eyes, turn away at competitions? Only when Diana and Gleb skate, because it seems to me that there is a connection that maybe she will feel me. Are you forgiving Diana something on the ice? No, no. When I come, we swear for every unstretched leg. How do you solve the question that she is training far away from you? I worry. I miss her. They send me a video, I start calling. Or I will circle around places, which it seems to me they need to work on. She has a coach. She says to me, Mom, I have a coach. The most emotional moment of the last season was Anya Shevakova's tears in front of everyone. Everyone was watching and you were crying. The preparation was very difficult. The consequences of the coronavirus. There was no strength. It was a little scary for her. Naturally, when she pulled it all, did it so well. Plus, Sasha skates cleanly. I don't know if Camila can skate clean enough to beat Sasha. Camila skates perfectly, beats Sasha, and Anya comes, who does not have the strength to beat clean Camila. She needs to perform a miracle, and she does it. These are such emotions. Two tears, probably it's like in a war. Give it all, and take it all. So that's how it works, after all. Yes. Who is your back in terms of colleagues? Sergei Viktorovich Dudkov and Daniil Markovich Gleikenhaus. Three of us, we are working together. And how is it to work with Tudberidze? What does it mean to work with Tudberidze? I am greedy. I don't want to share my knowledge. Because when I retire, I will say, Oh, I need to give out everything faster. Everything that I remember. Uh, at least, honest, I understand what you are saying. Yes, I don't want to share my knowledge yet. Well, everyone is constantly discussing your wardrobe. Your coat is already the talk of the town. Look, I had one jacket. It's so warm and comfortable with fur. I put it on three times. It's really expensive. And they interview me. Tell me, are you wearing this coat the same way as Tchaikovskaya was wearing her hat? Well, I only wear it for the third time. I didn't wear it again. I understand that, unfortunately, I can't appear in the same coat. Otherwise, they immediately begin to think that it's some kind of magical. What about your gray coat from 2018? Where do you have it? In my closet. I yes, it seems I never wore it afterwards. It is so associated with the Olympics and with my mother. I do not know why. Well, girls now look at their success. They want to be the same, repeat their success, be as popular and in demand. Everyone wants to be popular, in demand, beautiful, happy, rich. But not everyone is ready to give it all when there is no strength. And you no longer understand whether you will reach the end. You understand that you have a goal that goes beyond self-love. You still have some kind of turnover in the team, one way or another. It's not clear that your core, Dudakov, Danya, they are here. Plus or minus someone leaves, comes or not. Who are you asking? About Rezanov? Or what? 
for example. For example, another one, as you said, conditional Razanov. In fact, I do not want to take him, because he is a snob. He is confident that he will definitely come to a result. It's impossible. We adopted the guy. We taught him for a long time how to cut music, work on a computer, how to do programs, how to train in general. We taught and let him go. As he said in an interview, it got bored with us. Well, okay, I'm not bored. Well, there's probably some kind of star fever. At some point, it starts to seem that they know this very path to success. It's not a matter of the team. I'll come to it anyway. There is a legend about you in life that you don't want to communicate with anyone. Oh, listen, there is so much hate around now. I sometimes read, how does a person, after writing this, reasoning, go to sleep? Is he calmly falling asleep? What about conscience? Not ashamed? Sometimes I'm horrified by some phrases. But at the same time, I want to say, I opening Instagram and see how many people love me. I read, sometimes they just write, God bless me health. There are a lot of people. I don't even know if I deserve it. So it all compensates. Is this pleasant for you? Probably more responsibility appears. I seem to be responsible for all this love. You have to understand that I am a coach. They will love me as long as I show good results. And remember, and then I'm not saying that I need to be remembered and loved. It will be great if three medals are ours. Otherwise, of course, there will be an understanding that we underperformed. So your goal is all three medals? Yes. And you see, tomorrow I will give you part two of this wonderful interview with the Terry Tudbeidza. And I'll add a postscript with my thoughts. Baka. And after listening to the beautiful and meaningful words of Terry Yorgivna, I only have but one question. Eteri, did you know that your baby girl will one day walk on water? Eteri, did you know that your baby girl would save our dying sport? Did you know that your baby girl has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Eteri, did you know that your baby girl will give sound to a deaf girl? Eteri, did you know that your baby girl would come a storm with her blade? Did you know that your baby girl has skated where angels trod? Truly, the same ring as that of virtue. And when you kiss your little girl, you've kissed the face of God. Eteri, did you know? Well, after watching the interview with Eteri Tuberidza, I was reminded of an article I came across. Why do narcissists discard you? The article reads in today's blog, I will discuss the discard from the narcissist. To discard means to get rid of something that is no longer useful or desirable to you. This is exactly what the narcissist does to people in their life, when they no longer feel that that person adds value to them. The narcissist sees people as objects they use to meet their needs, and to discard when the person no longer serves a purpose to them. A narcissist will discard when the person no longer can boost the narc's ego, or be the fuel to replenish their narcissistic supply. If you have ever been discarded, it can feel personal. One day you think the relationship is going good, or at least improving from its low, and the next day you are discarded, thrown to the side as if you never mattered to begin with. When you are the one who is being discarded, it is hard to not think you are responsible for this discard. However, it is important to keep in mind that it is about the narcissist and has nothing to do with you. So why do narcissists make the decision to discard you? When you are with the narcissist, you are not providing companionship and love in the sense that most relationships thrive. Rather, for the narcissist, you are there to feed their ego, boost their self-esteem, and feed their narcissist supply. 
You are the reason they exist, because they cannot do any of these things on their own. On the surface, they appear competent and confident, but deep down they are fragile and broken. They use others to get their own needs met, because they cannot do this themselves. The narcissist will treat you like you are the most important person in their life and shower you with love and gifts. However, this is only meant to keep you around and not with the intention of you feeling better. The act of love bombing and idealization is meant to pull you into the relationship and have you be a ready source to feed their supply when needed. However, all good things must come to an end and few things can serve as a supply forever. When the narcissist feels that you are no longer serving them, they will discard you. Well, it's very interesting because you have to remember how lovingly Etzeri has spoken about her Olympic champion, Alina Zagitova, lazy. Her two-time world champion, Evgenia Medvedeva, fat. Or her original star, Yulia Pnitskaya, ungrateful to her own mother. And then you will remember, this is not Etzeri's fault. Maybe she was ready to discard Shebakova after the world. She was used up. But then Trusov is broken. Kostarnaya left. Now we need Sherbakova again. But she's not so good. It is a Terry. She is the real talent. Just remember. Th these stories about the Terry, these are bullshit. These are rumors. She's the real coach. Baka.